Welcome to Real Estate You with Letty Ann. Welcome back to Real Estate You podcast, Real Estate You with Letty Ann. We are in season three, and today I'm lucky enough to be interviewing John McCracken with Kingdom. <laughs> Kingdom Movers. I'm laughing because he said he was afraid our knees were knocking, but they're not. Uh, Anyway, John with Kingdom Movers. And we are talking today with uh, local business owners. And I wanted to speak with John about his, of course, locally owned in the Kansas City metropolitan area moving company. And I have so many questions because, uh, one, there's a lot of moving companies. Oh, yeah. Two, as a real estate professional, people tend to think they only need a mover or movers if they're going across country uh-huh. or out of state, right? That's Which I know, good, yeah. I know you do that too. But oftentimes mm-hmm. someone might move just six miles down the street and they're like, well, we don't really need movers. And oh. I'll say, did you ever think about that? I haven't. Because they think, well, we're not going that far. We can make a few trips or, you know, get, you know, we can rent a truck for an hour. But, you know, that turns out to be a nightmare. That turns out to be a week move when it could have taken eight hours. (laughs) Totally. And so much time and energy. And, of course, we know the moving process is uh, wickedly emotional and stressful anyway. So why on the day of your move do you go, dang, why didn't I, why didn't (laughs) I hire a professional to move me five miles down the street? So uh, I always encourage that for people because uh, they're probably at the wits end at that point plus they're filled with excitement plus the need to get everything out of the house it's a lot in one day as you know oh, yeah. mm-hmm. so uh tell us the well actually you told me when someone hires you nine times out of ten the day that they're moving their moving date changes yeah so sometimes it's the day of i had a call actually i had a call i was in tennessee we just moved somebody from johnson city or to Johnson City, Tennessee, and we were at the Ramsey Solution Building. And I got a call, and this guy said, we need to move into Connecticut tomorrow. And I thought, oh, no, what happened? He said, American Van Lines just called me and canceled. And I thought, wow. And it's super common. Unfortunately, that is extremely common. So I said, yeah, let's do a video call. I'll have my guys. I called all my guys. They're all for it. So I had them packing all of his stuff. He, he didn't want to touch anything. And so that was packing. here in Kansas City. Yeah, here in Kansas City. Yeah. Not in Tennessee. So we were in Tennessee at the time because we moved somebody there. Oh, okay. So my wife and I spent a couple of days in Nashville, and then I got this call thinking, wow. <laughs> so we, we, we're become Minutemen, basically. I like to call ourselves Minutemen because we almost have to be prepared at a moment's notice. So we did. We did a video call with them. The guys packed them, loaded them, and I drove to Connecticut two days later. <laughs> And that's how that's just how it works sometimes. And it it was really good for us because I had the the four days in my schedule open so I could do that. And we had to switch things around. My wife took care of a lot of the meetings and stuff. So it worked out great. We got paid really well and the customer was super happy, extremely pleased. You can imagine. <laughs> Yeah. Do you leave a buffer on either side or how, like when you schedule, that has to be important scheduling, yes. knowing that there's a good chance that this is going to move by this way or this way. Whether the move moves or we're just unprepared or the customer's underestimating what they have when they say, oh, yeah, I've got a two-bedroom apartment. You know, and that happened, actually. He needed to be out there by 5 p.m. And I just simply, I said, look, I don't know if we can do that. He goes, if you guys can do that, I'll give your guys $200 extra. If you can be out if by they, 5 o'clock. If you get them out by 5. I said, we'll, we'll do the best we can. I just, so we did not work until 1030, but his, his apartment people were telling him, we're, gonna, we're going to evict you officially and take your security deposit if you're not by five. I left them a voicemail because I know people in the city. I told them who I was. I told them we were, my guys were on the ground. They were going to get them out as soon as they could, but 5 p.m. is unrealistic. And they called him, I don't know, some part of the day and said, we'll, we'll give you till midnight. And that was perfect. That's what we needed. Oh. So we got him out of there by 1030. I helped my guys after flying into town that morning, worked all day, errands, estimates, you name it, loaded about four and a half hours with my guys because they were done. They were exhausted. They had, that was their 50th hour or so before they started that job. So it ended up being a 60-hour week for, for all four of those guys. Did they get their $200? Yeah, he actually did. At That's the end of the so day, nice. he did split $200 between them anyway because they worked so hard. He I'm, was, yeah. I'm just reminding everyone, I'm with John McCracken. He's with Kingdom Movers. He's the owner, operator, locally owned business here in the Kansas City metropolitan area. And uh, just encouraging you as well, whether you're moving across state or across the 
city, mm-hmm. um, maybe it's a good idea to hire professional movers uh, instead of trying to just go those five miles yourself with several several trips. Um, yeah. So tell us tell us some war stories, John. Um, well, that, that's just one off the top of my head, and then some great stories after that. There's probably, I mean, there's probably handfuls of those kind of stories. So there's one time I got a call. It was summer three years ago, and they said, hey, our movers aren't answering the phone. We can't get them on the phone. We have two 26-footers here. We just need them loaded. And I had five guys with, there within an hour. So you, yeah. you, if someone's got vehicles already rented, you'll load them? Yeah. But yeah, you, we you, tailor to people's needs. So, so if you they won't need, drive them, though, but you'll... We'll do you'll, whatever they want. Oh. We've even been hired to just drive. Because I had a customer calling one time. She said... I thought I was going to be able to drive this, but I'm really nervous. It's a really big truck. Can I hire a guy to drive it? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so what what does your moving fleet look like? So how small of a move would you move and how large right. of a move can you so move? So we recently just bumped our two-hour minimum to a three-hour minimum with two men because we just weren't making much money. Mm-hmm. So we stopped doing one-bedroom apartments, ground floor to ground floor within 10 miles, basically, Unless they were willing to pay the three-hour minimum. And most of our returning customers, they'll, they'll pay whatever it is because my guys are hard workers. And this in this industry, it's actually really difficult to find clean hard workers. Hard workers are a dime a dozen, but guys who are not ex-convicts, guys who, are, who don't drink or smoke, guys who, who have no profanity on their, you know, on their lips, awesome guys. I have customers crying, of just pr- singing their praises, crying, because of how incredible they are, just their character. Because they've had movers in the past that did, let's just say, <laughs> a lot worse. Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, I think it's you get what you pay for in the industry. We I get a lot of calls so that, agree with that, you know, they say, well, I got a $500 less quote. I said, look, I would love to earn your business, but you get what you pay for. I've, I've sewn up at got, uh, jobs where other movers are there. And it looks like they just woke up out of their bed. And you know? they move like they, snails. Yeah. And they're like, what yeah. room do we go to? And then one guy's telling the other guy what to do. And mm-hmm. um, so, so in the time that you've just lost in those hours of paying, those extra hours, they could have paid you the $500. And Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I tell people, we have a procedure and we stick to it. So we show up at the customer's house. We do a full walkthrough. So every guy knows everything that's going. And then when we get to the unload address, we do another full walkthrough. We need, to, we need to know, every guy needs to know where everything is going. So there's no, oh, where is this? You don't need that to, you don't need so that. much time. Yeah. And obviously, if customers label their boxes, that's huge. Because let's say it's been an eight-hour day. We're pretty tired. We can't remember every single thing. Well, every box, if it has a label on it, we already know what room that is. We we'll either do, hey, this is room number one, two, three, or four, or baby room, kids room. You know, so we just know, hopefully, you know, but. <laughs> By an hour of the unload, everyone knows what rooms are. So if, yeah. if they're labeled, it's a lot easier. So I always encourage our clients, label the boxes, put color coding on the doors of the door of the bedroom doors, you know, whatever you have to do. Now, kitchen, that's pretty obvious. <laughs> you don't need to label the kitchen. Um, do yeah. you pack? We do everything. So okay. we pack. We actually had a customer call recently. We haven't done it yet, but we've had a customer call and say, hey, I want you to pack us, move us, and unpack us. I'm pregnant. My husband's going to be out of town. I just don't want to do the work. So we'll do it all. As long as it's legal, we will do it. We'll move it. <laughs> how, how short will you go? Short, short as distance. in... What, what's your shortest? Oh, I mean, I've moved, people across, I've moved people across the street. I've moved people within one apartment to another apartment in the same building. As long as they're paying the, the minimum, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter. And how far how far will you go? How in the distance? Uh, we've been to New York. We've been to uh, L.A. Been to Green Bay, Wisconsin, Florida. So there isn't a distance that is too far. So you're originally from Georgia. Uh huh. And what brought you to Kansas City? Bible school at the International House of Prayer. Okay. Yeah. Good. Are you still going there? No, no. That okay. was just a year, and then God sent me around the world as a missionary for Aww, a few years. That's wonderful. Yeah, and then I started this company literally right after those three years were finished, yeah. And you've been 13 years in the business? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And you're loving every minute of it? Yeah, I love moving. It's honestly, it's like Because, you know, a, most people hate moving. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so I, I was born for it, <laughs> for sure. I mean, people tell me, even my wife, she goes, "We need to, we need to sell this business because it's a lot of work, and you know, not, not you're not making as much money as you could selling supplements or something." You know, I said, "I realize that, but I love it. I love wow. transforming people's hearts as we're moving them, and that's the, what we do." So our motto is actually trans or moving hearts and homes, and that order because our goal and our our whole mission is to move people's hearts by way of we're doing the job excellently, but we're also praying throughout the day, uh, asking Holy Spirit for insight into their lives. And at the end of the move, we pray for all of our customers. Now, some people, very rarely, they just don't want us to pray. That's fine. So if they're Hindu or what have you, we respect that. But they can't do anything about us praying for them anyway (laughs) in the truck. So uh, we're really missional focused, uh, not just there to make a dollar, not just there to make a tip. We're there to move people emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And we want them to see that we want to transform people's perspective of the moving industry. And that's why we do it. I love it. I'm trying to do that in the real estate business. Yeah. Uh, because uh, there's a lot of people that would rather have a root canal than speak with a realtor. Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. You know, maybe they had a bad experience, kind sure. of like the moving experience. Oh, yeah. Um, and I am I say it probably three times a day. You get what you pay for. And when mm-hmm. someone asks for a discount, I say, I'm so sorry. I take my job com- very seriously. Mm-hmm. I'm 150% in this for you. This isn't about me. And... Um, so uh, I'm delighted to have met you. Yeah. Yay. yeah likewise. John McCracken, Kingdom Movers, right here in the Kansas City metropolitan area. And if you like uh, the content and what you're learning here uh, with John and myself, please be sure to, well, for one, please uh, subscribe to uh, John's Facebook page. Um, and it's, you do have a business page, Kingdom Movers. Yeah. And as well as our YouTube page, Letty Ann and Associates Real Estate Services, just so you don't miss an episode of this great content. Uh, let me ask you this. What is your most asked question, John, in the past 13 years about moving? Like when when your wife picks up the phone or what, what's, what's, do you, <laughs> it's will kind you, of funny. Will, yeah, it's very ahead. comical. So yeah. most, I'm 90% of the time, they say, how much does it cost to move us? And I'm like baffled thinking, well, we need a little bit more information. <laughs> we have so many calls where they just ask that blanket question. <laughs> so uh, that would be my primary question as a, as a joke. But the most, I think the most primary question to be serious is, um, uh, are you probably are you willing to move us across the country? Because they don't either they don't know or they just didn't look at our website, you know, KingdomMoversKC.com or Kingdom Movers KC. Oh, yeah. Kingdom Movers KC. Yeah, it's going to be on the com. screen right here, folks. So uh, it's it's probably that's probably the primary question is, are you willing to move us this far? Like, well, yeah, yeah we'll move you. So wherever. let's change the mindset, because a lot of people think, oh, I'm moving across country, even if it's up to New York, which isn't across country. But, you know, I'm moving across country or I'm moving three st- states over. We need to look up national movers. Oh yeah. Because they think, right. People think that I think it's a mindset. So let's get rid of that. You can still support local. Oh yeah. And they can still get you uh, to to Los Angeles if need be or Seattle. And I can tell you about 10 reasons not to hire corporations. Fire away. There's a lot of people that don't know. And I've shared this with lots of customers, even if they didn't go with us, I at least want to warn them, this is what you're getting. So corporations, when you call, when you call van lines or, you know, not to bash them, it's just their procedures, it's their policy. So you're only insured up to 60 cents per pound. So if you have a 10 pound, 10, 15 pound TV that gets destroyed, you're getting about seven or eight dollars for that. Dang. Just think about that. Wow. Or if you get an arm wall that's been in your family for years, it's, it's an antique and it's worth priceless, right? It gets damaged. They're giving you 60 cents per pound. Is, is this thing, in the fine print? Likely that yeah, it's in, the, it's in the fine print of, yeah. it's actually in every, uh, what their section's called, I can't remember, insurance policy or something. And it's it's right there. People just don't read it. And I and there's another thing. If you call a corporation, you don't know that they're, you're getting about nine different hands on your things, mm-hmm. but you don't know that. So you'll call a corporation. They send a driver, just a driver, 
to you to low and he'll hire a local moving company. He'll just call a local mover and subcontract it out, load it, and then he'll drive it to a, a hub storage area somewhere in Texas, Atlanta, some major city. And when it's convenient, they'll have another set of guys. Well, actually, they'll lo- unload that truck, that semi, into a se- into a storage area. So you've got three other guys. That's six hands. And then once you have once it's convenient for them to take your trip to, let's just say, Virginia, then when when the driver gets there to the hub storage unit, he will actually have three other guys in a warehouse, three other hands. Like move they're your passing stuff. the baton. Yeah. So okay. you don't know. People's stuff go missing all the time. They leave it in the storage unit conveniently or they steal it or things get damaged and they're like, well, we don't want to load I, that. I didn't do it. He, they did it. Before. So there's no way to know who to keep accountable. And at the end of the day, the driver says, it wasn't me because <laughs> nobody knows. Driver doesn't know. He's a different driver even. So local companies, they just, hopefully, that's what we do. We, we load you immediately. We drive out the next day or the same day, and you have your things within two and a half days. Corporations give you a, a um, what do you call it, a range of time. We'll have it here between this day to this day. I've known people that have not had their stuff for a month, and they had to stay in a hotel for a month. Where's the stuff? Insane. It's just in a storage unit waiting for a convenient trip. Or let's say they get a flat tire. The corporations, they they actually, uh, the way they use that, the way they work that is it takes, it takes days for them to get a new trailer, shift all that, load into it. It's just, it's a long period, long process to get all that shifted over. So that's why I say corporations, they may have great intentions, but the policies and procedures, the system, the way it's set up, you're not guaranteed your stuff on time. You're not guaranteed your stuff in one piece. You're not guaranteed uh, your your things. They could be things that are stolen. It's a massive misconception because yeah. uh, if I whether no matter what type of business it is, they think, oh well, it's it's a corporate company, so yep. it's got more people, it's got more backing. It's uh-huh. the same with in the real estate world. Well, I'm going to go with big box because there's yep. more people. More people doesn't mean anything. That just means more no. people maybe not knowing what they're doing. Yeah. So um, I love that you dial it in and that you you, you care that much. And uh, yeah, I really, I'll spend an hour on the phone with a customer, yeah. <laughs> just and, explaining, hey, if you do this, this is what you're walking into. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good it's to really know important. because I so many people who ask me about moving, they're like, no, I need to call a national company. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, here's some local movers. Call them first. Yeah, and I just want to warn people. Forewarn you, go to YouTube and look up videos for Grable, Van Lines. Um, uh, there's myriads of corporations that have semis that, that move you corporately. Look up the videos. They're absolutely shocking. Who takes the videos? Just uh, just like a customer's wife or, you oh. know, when they get to New York or wherever it is. I remember watching a video. This guy had like 40 tubs that were all crinkled. And he said, look at this, it's all collector's items. And there's nothing, oh, no. he couldn't replace it. He was irate on video, and he's, he, show, he, want, he wants to show people, like, look, don't hire these companies, man. They, they, are, they don't know who did it. No one knows who to blame. And all my stuff, not all of it, but I think 40 tubs were totally destroyed. And he got, like, $40 for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he was only compensated. The driver's like, well, I didn't do it. I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> and it's, it's just unfortunate, you know. With us, you can say, well, these three guys, those are the only guys that touch your things. And we guarantee on our contract, nobody does this. This is a huge risk for us, but we guarantee to compensate, repair, replace according to what we damage to your satisfaction. Kingdom Movers, yeah. folks. Kingdom Movers right here, locally owned and operated. John McCracken is our owner here. So if you're considering moving, whether it's across the parking lot or across the country, please consider uh, Kingdom Movers. And I have, I just really want to know, those six to eight foot gun safes. Yeah. How, the how, A lot of people just say, I'm sure this can't be moved. I'm leaving. Oh, yeah. I'm leaving it. Yeah. Yeah. We move them all the time. So it's just a matter of leveraging the weight for oh. you and using wheels. I always thought that dogs were men's best friend. When I got into the moving industry, I immediately realized it's wheels are men's best friend. So learning how to use <laughs> wheels to your advantage is huge. Dogs are still pretty good, but not for moving, <laughs> just as your best friend. Yeah. Um, do you have a dog? 
I do. Or just a bunch of wheels. We bought we bought a puppy recently. Aww. It's four months old now. Oh, yeah. that's so cute. John, thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. I hope so. And, and I encourage you to reach out with moving questions to uh, your business Facebook page. That's Kingdom Movers. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Real Estate You with Letty Ann.